Coach, congrats on the victory tonight. If you could give us a opening statement about the game this evening. Sure. That was a great ball game. Uh, tough conditions to hit. And I thought both pitchers, Ryan, Ryan was obviously outstanding. Uh, I thought May, um, Mason was outstanding for them. Um, we just happened to get, you know, uh, Appel's big hit to uh, kind of break it open a little bit, get us in scoring position. And then um, both Hayden and, uh, and Caden did an awesome job of staying on the baseball and, and using the whole field to hit um, and keeping it low. Just really, really tough night to hit. Uh, really good night to pitch. It doesn't take anything away from either pitcher, but I thought uh, it was a very well-played game uh, by both teams. So we're excited to win, and I'm sure Kentucky will do great tomorrow. Thank you, Coach. We'll open questions for student-athletes right here. First one's right here, and then we'll go right here. Richard Zane, TexAnx.com. Ryan, with your story and missing all of last year with an, uh, Tommy John surgery, what does it mean for you to come out on this stage or through your last pitch as a freshman and have this kind of night? Yeah, just super grateful to be back. I mean, last time we were here, there's left with a little sour taste in my mouth, and to be able to come back out with, with this group of guys and, and do what we did, I, I think it was just a test to who this team is. We've shown that we can do it in a, in a variety of different ways, and uh, to be honest, we just enjoy being around each other, and the more days we can be around each other, we're, we're truly being grateful for them. Go Kendall, one, one two, three. Yeah, I thought you raised your hand, sorry. No, you don't have to. Yeah, Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball. Ryan, I guess looking back to last week to this week, what was maybe a little different about your stuff? And as a pitcher, when you walk into the ballpark and see the flags going straight in, and as a guy who keeps the ball low in the zone, are you like, okay, this is going to be a lot of fun? Yeah, I think after last week, like as soon as I came out, I, there was some frustration. But once we made the last out, all that went away, and it was super fun. I mean, we just won an opportunity to, to come to Omaha. So I thought – that went away pretty quick, but but those first couple of days afterwards, there was maybe some thinking, maybe, maybe a little bit of overthinking, but truly really coming back to neutral and understanding that what I've done all year is has led to some success, and nothing really needs to change. There doesn't have to be a drastic change. So, showing up to the park, I think we knew what the conditions were, and uh, that that definitely had a plan. It, but also just just staying true and doing what we do, and uh, letting letting kind of everything play out how it played out. Right there. Uh, Mark Passwaters with Rivals. Uh, Cadence, what's for you? Um, first, can you walk us through your uh, RBI at bat? And second, how tough was it to kind of make the shift from second to third there when Jace had to come out after you've been playing second pretty exclusively for a while now? Um, <clears throat> my at bat to score a couple runs was uh, the guy was throwing a, a, sink, uh, a slider cutter thing and a, and a heater. And uh, I got a hold of one of his cutters, and uh, he left it a little too much over the plate, uh, but I pulled a foul, and he threw me a heater that took, got too much of the plate, so I was able to handle it. Uh, and then making the shift over to third is, is not as bad as I think it seems. Uh, I mean, I take, ground balls, I take ground balls there, second base, uh, shortstop. I mean, it's... It's it's nothing different except for the ball comes a little faster. So uh, I was able to make a I was make a, I was make a, able to make a play. We go there and we'll go right here. Matt Talry from World Baseball Network. Ryan, what's it just like to have a guy like Jackson behind the dish be such a commander to you guys as a whole for the pitching staff, and then just keeping the seven guys behind you active, nine flyouts, six groundouts, also with four strikeouts. How do you just feel like the biggest tempo for you and your mechanics coming out of tonight? Yeah, for, <clears throat> first off with, with Jackson, I mean, it's great to have trust in a guy back there and have a good relationship and be able to know, know what each other needs to kind of keep going. So we've had a great relationship, and it's been super fun to be able to basically go to work with him every day. And then just, I guess, keeping the guys in the game is, is just we, we play really good defense. So we know that when the ball is hit to somebody, we have we have the utmost confidence that majority of the time that it's going to be an out so uh that that's an attest to, to what our guys do and, and the work that they put in and gives us confidence to fill up the zone and make, make other guys beat us last two questions here in there tyler shaw with, with kbtx Caden, um just w what has this postseason been like for you kind of you know getting back into the lineup and and stepping up to to the challenge and just this college world series experience for you I mean, it's amazing. Anytime you can play playoff baseball, it's amazing. Uh, the fans are, are crazy, especially in, in Olsen Field. 
uh, and our teammates and my teammates are are ultra supportive of everybody. Um, we have each other's backs and we play for each other. Uh, like Ryan said earlier, I mean, we have full trust in everybody in that dugout. So it's amazing when a team can and c- can come together like we are and, you know, and enjoy being around each other so much where where we can win ball games and it's super fun to play. Last question for the players right there. It's Brown with the Bryant College Station Eagle. Hayden, as a, as a guy who's kind of commanding the, the, the vibes in the dugout, how were y'all uh, approaching Prager? Were you talking to him, not talking to him? Uh, what was kind of the, the situation in there? Uh, I, I would not say that I was commanding the vibes in there. I think you had a guy like, I mean, the fact that Braden's in there and he's like the loudest one in there and he just had surgery. I mean, it, I don't know. It's, it's so dang cool to see. I, I, our team is so selfless and, I mean, that's the beauty of playoff baseball is just playing for each other. So I would definitely not say I was the king of vibes in there. I think Braden did a great job. You got guys like Hank Bard in there doing a great job. So it takes, it takes a village, man. And Prager? Oh, with Prager? Oh, I, I didn't say a word to him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, I'm going hey, to be that guy who goes over and says something? No way. No way. I'm not that guy. No chance. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. We have. We will. We have some for you. <laughs> yeah. You might be back here again, so that's why we need to keep it. Okay, we're going to start over here first, but then we'll make our way back over here. I promise you guys. First question right here. Richard Zane, Tex Hex coach. First update on Jace Lovelette, and then second. The outing that Ryan had, uh, what was what does that mean for the team itself moving forward in the tournament, and then also see a guy like that after what he's been through the year last year and a half or so? Yeah, I mean, super. I mean, that's the first two games we've been here. That, that's about how we drew it up, you know. Um, so I was glad to see him get a little bit of a cushion. Um, also glad that he didn't have to go much further than he did, because if we have a chance to win this thing, he's going to have to pitch again and on much shorter rest. So. Um, but he did a great job. We played good defense behind him. I think any time the wind's blowing the way it was, gives every pitcher more confidence to throw the ball in the strike zone. Um, what was your other question? I'm sorry. Jace. Uh, Jace. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Tweaked his hamstring a little bit. Uh, thankfully, we don't play tomorrow. Um, so we got a good, hopefully, a little bit less than 48 hours to see if we can get him functional to, to do something on the field. So, yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's last two weeks have been – Losing players left and right, and gives other guys opportunities. So, it's may, ho- hopefully, we'll make a good story. <clears throat> okay, we'll go. Ken, Kendall, you have a question, right? You're good. Okay, we'll go right here, and then we'll go over here. Uh, I mean, coach, you, you mentioned you know Jace having the, the time of rest, but the fact that you guys have you know been on the winning track in this winners bracket, had the days rest. Just how meaningful has that been in this run, and will continue to be as you don't you know play till Wednesday? Yeah, I mean. It'd be really meaningful in the old bracket because we've had we would have like three days off, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's huge because we're just down. You know, we're down a pitcher, so it's it's just incredibly important that we stay in a winner's bracket and don't have to play too many games. I mean, we have we have, we brought plenty of guys to pitch, but when you're down, you know, Shane Sadeo and a guy that gives you great innings like that, um, then that's that's a big hole to fill uh, for for any team, at least for our team. So the fact that we get an extra day's rest here. And hopefully, just have to win one. You know, we got I've been in this situation before, 2016, and uh, we had to win one game. And Coastal Carolina had to win three, and they did. So uh, we've won. A, we've won. A, you know, we've won a couple ball games, but we're not where we want to be yet. Okay, we're going to finish over here, then we'll come back over here. Coach, uh, I guess starting off, just a follow up on Jace. Uh, did the game situation have anything to do with taking him out, or, or was that kind of? You know, something, he'd probably come out of the game regardless of what the situation was. He, he wanted to stay in the game. Um, being up five helped a little bit. I actually wasn't worried about the hitting and running the bases. It was just playing defense, right? And so being up five with the wind blowing in, that the wind the wind blowing definitely played a role. Uh, we were able to get him one more at bat. He struck out, but we were able to get him one more at bat, so that spot in the lineup didn't come. Uh, Grahovic's taken, uh, Grahovic and Bell both took balls in the outfield all week, uh, including while we were here. Uh, I've seen Gavin play – all three outfields before. so, And Kent obviously has incredible value. He can play all f- four spots in the infield. So uh, Jack Bell has played third, short, and second for us this year. Um, so we feel good about 
you know, the versatility. But, yeah, we only brought 13 position players, so uh, it's getting a little thin. Okay, we're going to zigzag back here with everybody. You know, Rogers doing baseball. Jim, just looking at, at Ryan's performance, what did you kind of see from him stuff-wise? As many times as you've been here, where does that kind of rank in terms of just stellar performances on the mound from one of your teams? Uh, yeah, well, 2015, Alex Young had a no-hitter uh, going against Vandy um, for us at TCU. Uh, Preston Morrison pitched some great games here, but you know I've seen a lot of, you know, whether it be teams that I've been a part of or team, you know, I've watched every College World Series game, and there's been a lot of great pitching performances, and that one certainly ranks right up there with them. Especially, you know, I mean, Kentucky's a really good offensive team, and uh, I thought um, Appel's play in the early in the game uh, to the the, the two out bunt um, that that was a huge play. Uh, you know, getting the strikeout first and third, nobody out. I'm sorry, one out. That was a huge, huge uh, pitch right there. But he had he had all three pitches going, and 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 they were uh, he filled up the strike zone enough where I think Kentucky started swinging more and got him some early outs and some you know in some situations to where he could pitch deeper in the game. And same thing for Stewart. I mean, Josh Stewart did an incredible job. We had we got Oshin back up. We didn't have to pitch him, so that that was big. Okay, well, Razor, and what's one in the back? Then we'll come back here to you. Last three. You're good. Okay. Carter Carls, 247 Sports. Schloss, when did you know that you wanted to start Ryan Prager against Kentucky? And I guess, do you think Justin Lampkin will be available to start uh, for Wednesday's game? Uh, yes, he will be available to start. I'm not telling you he's going to. I want to see who we play, see how Justin feels, get a feel, for, just get a feel for our team, the matchup and the conditions. Um, but, but we just knew going into the tournament, once we lost Shane last weekend, we were going to have to we have to get creative. We're going to have to see what the matchup is, um, and just felt like um, felt like it, it was it was actually more about when to pitch Cortez than it was to pitch the the two lefties. That was the that was the decision was when when can Cortez pitch and who does he match up best against? And we felt like the best matchup for Chris was against Florida. Okay. Last two questions right here and right here. Uh, Mark Passwaters with Rivals. Uh, Coach, I was hoping to get your thoughts on a few of your uh, older gentlemen, uh, Mr. Schott, Mr. Burton, and Mr. Appel. Uh, you know, the impact that they had, not just on tonight's game, but the season as a whole and their influence in the locker room. Yeah, just incredible people, you know. Um, like I said, I think you take those three guys, plus you throw in Braden. you got to give credit to where they came from. So you got to give a lot of credit to David Esker about on Braden Montgomery. you got to give credit... Uh, to the coach at Columbia and the and co- coaches at Michigan and the coaches at Penn uh, because they they developed these incredible young men. They come from great families. They were already awesome people. Um, but it's really neat to see those guys come, you know, to a big SEC school. They're so appreciative and thankful for the resources they have at a place like A&M. Um, and they're good players, and they don't get freaked out by, you know, all those guys played in postseason, uh, uh, shots played in a regional um, – I don't know if Teddy has, but did he play in the World Series? I don't know. Um, but Shot has. Shot's played in regional, too, as well. So, uh, you know, it's got, they're just cool, calm, steady. And, and, and I really think, you know, for the bulk of the season, the secret sauce of our offense has actually been those guys. Because Grahovic and Lavalette and Montgomery, they're superstar players. Those guys are good college players and potentially professional baseball players. But having that age of player – there in a row after those those guys creates depth. I know if you talk to the other teams in our league, they'll they'll say a lot of great things about Jackson Appel and what a tough out he is. Last question right here. Travis Brown with Bryan College Station Eagle. Coach, uh, I know you certainly want Prager to go out there and be efficient, but when you have a guy throwing a no-hitter, you mentioned your pitch, short staff pitching, does that make things a little trickier because you want to see him go out there and succeed, but you also want to minimize pitches, leave him for later games? Yeah, and that, I mean that would have been a um, had he kept that going, that may have been a decision I had to think about in the eighth, ninth inning. Um, more than likely, a guy get, gets a chance to throw a no hitter in the College World Series. I'm not going to take the ball from him, and we'll just worry about it later. But maybe he'll maybe he'll do it again. Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations! Right, thank you guys. On the win. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you for your time.